Hey boys, Big Joe Daddy here. Hey, I'm putting together this quick video for some of the newcomers that might need a little help getting their wireless set up with the QMix and the iPad remote. First thing you need to know though is that you got to download and install the latest and greatest universal control. Now, the universal control from PreSonus will include a bundle of items including the drivers and the firmware for the Studio Live the VSL software and of course the uh, universal control application so first things first you gotta download that app and make sure that you've got the latest and the greatest so let's take a look at how to do that okay to get the latest and greatest universal control go to the PreSonus website at presonus.com navigate over here to technical support part way down you'll see software updates and drivers click that and then navigate down the page through all the offerings until you get to the Studio Live section. They've got a listing for the 1602, 1642, and the 2442. So obviously choose the one that's suitable for your device. You'll notice on the 1642 there's some red print here indicating that to update to the latest and greatest universal control you must do it in steps if you're not running anything newer than version 1.13. You can find out what version you're running by simply going to the system menu on your Studio Live and page down until you get to the last page and it'll show you what you're running. So make note here they have an offering for both PC and Mac. I'm running a Mac so we'll concentrate on that for now. There's the download to the Universal Control, but there's also a couple of good features here. The release notes, get those, and then the download addendum, that's merely a uh, user guide. So a bunch of new cool stuff about the added features and functionality. So make sure you download that and take a look at that. Okay, assuming that you've got your latest and greatest Universal Control installed, let's take a look at all the components necessary to get this wireless working. In this case, I've got this MacBook Pro running OS Lion. I've got uh, Studio Live 16.4.2. I've got a standard iPhone 4, a first generation iPad, and a Linksys E3200 router. Rick Knackvy turned me on to this one, and uh, it's 109 bucks on Amazon. Really simple, works great. A lot of people are doing it different, ad hoc networks and other routers and whatnot. But if you want something that's painless, this is a good one to go with. Okay, so if you check it out and see how I have it wired up, I've got the Ethernet cable plugged into port 1. The Internet jack is blanked because we're not serving up any Internet. This is just serving as a wireless access point for our iPad and iPhone or iPods to connect so no need to busy ourselves with that. The other line end of the Ethernet cable of course plugs into the MacBook Pro and you'll also see the FireWire cable that plugs into the laptop and then the other end to the back of the Studio Live. Alright so the first thing we want to do is make sure that on your mixer after installing that universal control on your laptop that you conduct the upgrade and install the firmware onto your Studio Live. And to find out what you're running, you simply go to the system menu and then page down until you get to the last page. And you got to be running this 1.5 build 184 in order to connect with that QMix software and the Studio Live remote software on the iPad. So if you have any troubles uh, installing the firmware on your mixer, <clears throat> let's just go through that real quick. All you really need to do is after you've installed uh, the universal control and you launch it and light off your Studio Live mixer, typically there's going to be a pop-up menu that says, hey, you need to install the latest and greatest firmware. And you can do that right here under settings, check firmware, and then install that firmware from there. Okay, so to display the VSL interface, all you do is click on the little icon here and that pops up VSL which is a digital rendition of the mixer. Now under the overview tab that shows up uh, as you might imagine with all the controls and everything but we're interested in the setup mode so we're gonna go over here to setup and then I'm gonna 
click hide browser to give me a little more screen real estate here and see this section called remote devices now there's nothing showing in that screen right now because we don't have any of the iPod or iPads connected first thing we want to do right mouse click on on this wireless icon and make sure that uh, in this case I'm connected to Joe Daddy's Linksys and that's the name that I gave the the new uh, Linksys wireless device when I uh, configured it for the first time and so you'll get a unique name for yours and a uh, password and so on and so forth okay so we know that the laptop is ready to go and now we need to go over to the other devices in this case let's take a look at the studio or at the uh, iPad first thing I like to do under general settings is go over here to uh, the uh, auto lock feature and I choose never when I'm using it with my studio live so that I don't have to worry about the thing timing out and losing the connection now the other thing you'll see here we have to go up and, and set the Wi-Fi now the this this one that is presently connected to is simply the wireless at my house so I want to switch gears there and connect again to this Linksys router that's connected to the MacBook Pro alright so now that I've done that I can go and and launch the Studio Live remote software and lo and behold it recognizes the Studio Live I click once to select it and click connect to connect to the Studio Live. Give it a couple moments. Boom, we're in. Okay, so now if we go back to the laptop and look at that remote device screen in VSL, lo and behold, there it is. And you'll see that there are these are the buttons that you use to set permissions front of house grants all permissions everything's wide open to whoever's connected to uh, this um, computer with the iPad using studio live software channel rename is also activated and that gives the user the ability to name channel strips and auxes and whatnot from the iPad alright now let's jump ship and we're gonna go over to the iPhone and, and this time we're gonna repeat the process we're gonna to go to the settings and choose Wi-Fi and again we want to choose Joe Daddy's Linksys and connect to that particular Wi-Fi now we can exit out of there and go over and launch our QMix software and there it also recognizes, identifies that there is a Studio Live in the neighborhood. So we click once and again on the connect button to launch it. All right, and we're in. Now, if we go back to the laptop and we look at the remote device window, there you'll see there are two devices Joe's iPad, Joe's iPhone. Now, the iPhone if you'll notice has the permissions set to channel rename as well uh, you may not want to do that with every band member but most importantly I like the aux settings here you can choose uh, uh, to uh, identify or grant permissions to each of your bandmates to an individual aux so they can't accidentally mess up somebody else's monitor mix they're locked into their own and if for some reason you want to grant somebody like yourself perhaps all oxes, there you can do it right there. Uh, but in my case, I've uh, in my band I'm on aux four, and so now when I launch the QMix software, and lo and behold, there it grays out all the other oxes and it just defaults to aux four. Now I'm going to set this here where I can get at it a little better. But you'll notice that uh, just by scrolling through the window here I can set the levels on any one of the items that uh, are on the page okay so now let me show you another item that's pretty cool see if I can do this one-handed I'm gonna exit the setup screen 
and go over to the channel overview. And uh, let me give you a heads up on why we're doing this. You notice that all the channel strips are just channel one, channel two, so on and so forth. But what we want to do is get those scribble strips labeled. And to do that, we're going to select one of the saved scenes in the browser window right over here on the right. And I'm just going to click and drag and let go. And lo and behold, yeah, now all these scribble strips for uh, channel faders are named, as are the aux settings as well. And now we're momentarily, a minute ago it said Joe, or it said aux 4, now you can see it says Joe. And if we go back to the iPhone, and you can see, lo and behold, that aux is also named Joe. And if you look closely, the channel strips along the bottom are now labeled as well. Pretty cool. Now with the Q-Mix, if you were in the landscape mode right now, if we go into the portrait mode, the setting changes to the wheel of me. And uh, what's really cool is there's a little lock button right up there in the right hand corner. And now we're locked in on the wheel of me so you can throw the thing in your pocket and be good to go. All right, so we'll take a quick moment and look over at the iPad as it has some clever features as well when you rotate this into the portrait mode you'll notice that the fat channel is displayed and your auxes at the bottom are displayed so in any case there's lots more to see but you gotta keep this video short and sweet but that's the nuts and bolts of getting your wireless going and like I said earlier if you really wanna save yourself some grief get yourself one of those Lynx SE 3200s and you'll be in business any questions give me a shout alright this is Big Joe Daddy over and out